It's your open source advocate, and I'm back with another video. And this week, I'm just doing something kind of interesting. Um, I have a a lot of backup drives and a lot of backup copies that I've just made over the years. And in doing that, um, I've created just basically a an archive of all kinds of data that I've kept. And when I say over the years, I'm talking about 15 years worth of data, maybe more. And I was going through one of my drives the other day trying to clear things out and I thought okay there's got to be utility that I can use for this. Um, so I started looking for things and I found this really nice program called RD Find and there's a lot of them out there, don't misunderstand me. Tons of, of duplicate finders out there but I kind of like this one, I like the way that it worked and it, and it did a good job. Um, so I wanted to kind of talk to you about it, I don't know if you've seen it or not but hopefully it'll be a really useful tool but the, the issue that I run into is that I, I'm really freakish about backing things up and making copies and especially when I'm going to reinstall an operating system or move things to a new computer I back things up to a USB backup drive maybe a couple of them depending on how much data is there and over time I've, I've gotten this collection of five or six backup drives that are you know terabyte two terabytes four terabytes three terabytes just different sizes um, and I have all these different folders of data that I've copied from one to another and then trying to clear one up I copy a bunch of stuff onto another one that had had enough space and then wanted to move stuff from that one so I copied it to another one and just little by little I had these folders within folders within folders that, that all had duplicate copies of other folders and tons of data and photos and documents and everything else and I thought okay this is just I can't even imagine the task I'm going to have to go through to clean this up so I started looking for a tool to help me do that and that's where RD Find came in. So. This is a command line utility. It's a GitHub project. It's open source, of course. You can run it yourself. And if you scroll down here on the RD Find page, which I will put the link in the show notes in the description, as always, um, you'll, you'll see down here what they've got and what they're showing as far as builds and things like that. Um, you know, this is fairly old. It hasn't had a lot of updates in it, but it kind of just does what it does. So I'm not sure there's just a lot of things that have to be done to keep it running. But, you know, a little over a year ago, um, you know, so, so it's mostly two years, four years. They've done a, a few little updates here and there. It just doesn't take a lot to make it run much better than it does, but it's out there. You can check out the, the things that it's doing to kind of see how it works. Um, you know, here's continuous integration status, so it kind of shows you what's going on as far as that goes. Um, but if you want to install this thing, Debian Ubuntu, you just do apt install already fine, and of course probably sudo if you're not logged in as root, which you shouldn't be generally. And then Fedora, you can do dnf install already fine. Um, CentOS, I'm sure you can do DNF as well, Red Hat DNF as well. Um, Mac, if you're running Mac, then you can install through Mac ports. If you have Windows, um, you can install it using SigWin. So you can actually use this on, on all, all, the plat all the major platforms. Um, now, if you're using Arch, there's probably an AUR for it, but it's not listed here anyways. But th there's quite a bit of systems that are covered here with already Find, and I mostly run Ubuntu. Um, I don't run a lot of Fedora stuff other than on the, on the things for free IPA that you guys have seen. But um, yeah, I think this is a really, really cool program. So installing it is super simple. Just do sudo apt install already fine and then accept the installation and, and it'll install. Um, once you do that, you open up your terminal. And in my case, I have created just, just for the testing purpose and sh for showing you guys kind of what it does. I created this folder in my home folder here and it is called, uh, it's just called RD find test. And then I basically created a test folder one, test folder two. I stuck a PDF in here and then I stuck a uh, test document in here. And I'll kind of go through what I have set. So this test document is, is kind of one that I created. This is just one that I downloaded. If we go into folder two, you'll see that I've got the test document again. And this one, I opened it and made a slight change. So this one's different. Even though it's named exactly the same, it's different from the one on that first uh, first screen. So these two are not exactly the same. This, if anytime you see this PDF, it's exactly the same in any other folder. And any anytime you see this JPEG, it's exactly the same in any of these other folders. So you know, here's the JPEG again. And then if we go into here, we've got the JPEG again. And then we've got a video that I've only got one copy of, and we've got the PDF. So as we're going through here. Um, we're going to let RD Find kind of run on this on this folder and see what it comes up with, and kind of show you how it works. So when you're when you first download RD Find, if you want to know how it runs, you do man RD Find, and that's you know manual. Show me the manual for it, and it tells you RD Find find duplicate files. That's pretty basic. I mean that's what I'm trying to do exactly. And then here's kind of a synopsis of how to use it 
which is already defined, give it the options you want, directory one, you know, or file one, depending on what you're wanting to compare, and directory two, file two. So if you have two giant files, you can diff them, you can do already find on them, it'll tell you if they're different or not. Uh, but directory one and directory two, if you want to compare two directories, you can to see if they have uh, duplicates within them, that kind of stuff. So um, the other way to run it is just do already find options and then the directory that you want it to search, which is kind of what I do. And then it goes down recursively and looks through that. So it tells you exactly what's going on and what it's doing here. And it says by default, no action is taken besides creating a file with the detected files and showing the possible amount of saved space. So it kind of does a dry run, but there is a tag for dry run, which I kind of prefer to use but it kind of automatically does a dry run unless you tell it to do something else. Um, I just prefer to use the tag to make sure that it's going to do the dry run. Um, and as you get down here, you get options, and, and it kind of tells you um, some scenarios of A and B, you know, how it prioritizes which file. Um, so, you know, it says ignore empty, true, or false. So you can tell it, you know, ignore empty files. Like maybe you just have a bunch of, you know, on Windows especially, you click and you, and you didn't mean to, and then it creates a new file that's empty or a new folder that's empty for some reason. Um, so this can just kind of ignore those things and you can set different flags you know to, to tell it to do that. Uh, min size so ignores files with less than so many bytes so if you don't want it to worry about certain certain byte sizes that are too small you can tell it that. Um, follow sim links so you know in Linux systems sometimes you sim link which means I have this thing in this folder but really the file resides in another folder um, but if it finds that this is a duplicate still let me know about that. You can say follow that sim link and let me know about that. Um, checksums, you can tell it what type of checksum to use. I think by default it uses SHA-1, but you can tell it to try to use SHA-256 if you prefer. Um, and then deterministic, true, false. So again, if set, sort files of equal rank in an unspecified but deterministic order. So it's just telling it, you know, to do this. So here are your actions you can take. So this is kind of to do the scanning and how to how to scan. And then you have actions. So you can say make sim links, make hard links, make results files. So if I find a duplicate and I say, okay, I don't want that duplicate anymore. I want to get rid of the duplicate, but I still want to be able to access it from the folder that it's in. You can say make a sim link so that it's symbolically linked, which means basically sim links are like if I move the original file somewhere else, the sim link gets updated and still I can open the, the other file from the location it is or, or I can open that file from any location that the sim link is in. So if you think I have file A and it's in folder 123, but I want to run it from folder 789. I can sim link to file A from folder 789 and if I run A it's going to go actually open the file that's in 123. If I eventually move that file, the actual file A from 123, to 456, I can still run it from folder 789, and it's still going to open in 456. I didn't have to do anything special to relink it. Hard links are, are the other kind of link, which means I'm linking these two things, but if I move the original, that link is going to be broken, and I'm going to have to go fix it. So that's the difference between a sim link and a hard link, just to kind of make that less clear or better, hopefully more clear, but if you didn't follow me, I apologize. That's, that's just kind of the, the best example I can come up with off the top of my head. So you can tell it to make hard links, um, make results file, which, you know, here's the results that we found when we did the scan, and I want to see what's going to happen. Um, the output name of the file that you want, and then delete duplicates. So this is where you tell it, okay, I want you to actually do this and delete the duplicate files and get rid of them. And then general options, and then sleep um, to, to take a little time. You can say dry run if you want it to do a dry run, and you have to give it a true false. So if it has this true false underlined you have to tell it like hey I'm giving you this flag and actually do it or I'm giving you this flag and don't do it so it's not just give it the flag you actually have to tell it true or false um, again you can get help and you can see the version whenever you want to see the version number of already find so then they have some examples so you can say you know already find till they slash slash mount slash backup um, so you could hook up an external drive mount it and then run this on it to kind of get rid of all the stuff on the external drives that way if you want to as well um, and then results.txt, so it just gives you a bunch of examples, which is great. So let's get into this and actually try to run this thing. So I'm going to CD into my uh, test here, and I'm just going to look at it real quick, and I'm going to go back out, and I'm going to say, so I'm back in my home folder, um, I could just say CD as well, and we'll clear this, and I'm going to say, rd find 
dash dash dry run I think it's just dash actually not dash dash dry run true um, dot slash uh, rd find test and let's see so it goes really fast um, so it says now scanning it found eight files we now have eight files in total remove zero files due to non-unique device and inode total size is this number of bytes 94 megabytes basically and it says removed three files due to unique sizes from list dot five files left and now eliminating candidate you know candidates based on first bytes removed and then it says so it goes through and it looks at the first bytes then it looks at the last bytes and then it looks at a checksum of these files and it says it seems like you have five files that are not unique so five copies of of other files and it says totally 17 megabytes can be reduced so it's giving you kind of a report and it and it creates this results.txt file so if we do ls res star you'll see there's this file so we can look at this file and it kind of gives you that same breakdown so let's clear the screen just to make it easier and cat results.txt so it's automatically generated so it's telling us here dupe type ID depth size device inode priority name so it's going to tell us you know uh, dupe type first occurrence you know here's all the stuff that it gets and it's going to tell you the name of the file test photo jpeg I do have duplicated and here it is two times and then it says test folder 2 test photo jpeg test you know folder 1 test photo jpeg um, so it kind of lets me know like here's here's the file and then here's the two places that there here's the places that I found it and then here is the PDF that it found and it also found was a duplicate now remember I said the PDF and the test photo file are duplicates and then my document file that I created was not duplicated even though it was a copy it had differences so it said those are not the same which is great that's what we want right even though it's named the same even though it's very small difference I mean I added like two words it said that's not a duplicate which is awesome that's what you want it's not just going by file name it's actually looking and doing a checksum on the files and saying is this actually the same and then the movie file was unique it did not have a duplicate so it didn't find that so this tells me hey here's the things I can clean up if I want to get rid of those things so if we go back to the man are defined um, and we go down to the actions we can look at how do I delete those duplicates without just going through and manually deleting it so when I'm happy with this thing and I, and I say yeah that's that's what I want we can go down here and just look at it's just dash delete duplicates true so we can just quit and we'll say rd find dash delete duplicates true dot slash rd find test again make sure that you put in the the folder that you want it to check and, and don't just leave it blank or it'll check everything that's in the folder you're currently in and we're gonna tell it to go do this and it's going to tell us again it created the results file delete.txt and it deleted three files so if we go back and look in our folder we should see that it got rid of those three files so we have the PDF at the top level and the document at the top level now we have the photo here and here we just have the movie so I did have three files inside of this folder and now I got rid of the two duplicates and left them in the higher level folders and it left the movie alone which is what we want um, so if we go back and we go back one more here you can see there's my other document which I would expect to have and then here's my first document so now we have a unique set of files in here none of them are duplicated anymore which is amazing because it clears up space so now this was really fast because this is only eight files and they aren't huge files um, when you start running this on something like what I had where I had three and a half terabytes of data that I didn't know where the duplicates were or what they were but I did know that I had um, videos that I had shot over the years that were fairly good size where I had photo collections that were just massive you know in gigabytes where I had music collections where I had documents where I had all kinds of documentation of different things that I've kept receipts for and all kinds of other stuff um, I mean this was just a massive archive of stuff and not just my stuff but my, but my mom's stuff my wife's stuff just other people that I've backed up things for so when I told this thing to run it took a while the dry run I want to say took 45 minutes to an hour probably to finish um, just to tell me here's all the stuff that I found and I did kind of scroll through that and look and make sure it seemed like it was catching everything the way I wanted and then when I did the actual delete I had to let it run overnight 
for it to finish. It, it took hours and hours for it to go through and actually rerun that, redo the checksums, and then delete everything that, that I expected it to delete. So this is this is uh, RD Find. It's a really really great program if you're looking to do something, get rid of duplicate files and free up some space, even on your internal hard drive, on your external hard drive. You know, it's a really awesome tool, and I highly recommend running the dry run option first. And I'll kind of go back and show you just what I actually do. I typed it all in for you this time here, but uh, I'll do clear. And so I normally run the RD Find and then dash dry run true and then dot slash whatever folder it is you want to run it on and, and I let that run so this runs really fast because it's only again a few files then when I'm ready to run the delete I hit the up arrow so it comes right back up and I go in here and I type in the delete duplicates so that one I don't have to retype in the folder in case I'm type typing a long path to wherever it is I want to run um, you know that kind of stuff. I, the only thing I might mess up the spelling on would be this this flag, and it would tell me if I did. So if I did this and left out the e, it's going to be like I don't know what that flag is. It's not going to screw something up because I typed in the wrong path and get rid of a bunch of stuff that I didn't want it to get rid of. Um, so here you'll see it goes again. It recreates the results text file and and it does what it does. But at this time it didn't delete anything because there was no duplicates in the first place. So I hope this is helpful to you. If you enjoyed this video. If you got something good out of this video, please like, subscribe to the channel so you can learn more about things, hit the little notification icon, that way you get notified when I put out new videos, and I try to put out new videos at least once a week, sometimes a little more often than that, and tell your friends about it so they can come along on the journey with us. I'll talk to you next time.